Hey, how you doing? Welcome back to the Herbie Design Code Workshop. Welcome back to another episode of Business Bites. Just because you love it, doesn't mean you can't live it. I, like most of you, are involved in a number of uh, social media groups and whatnot for um, hobby woodworkers, hobby makers, um, beginner woodworkers and beginner makers and that sort of stuff. People with varying levels. And inevitably, there's always the discussion of how do I make money doing this? So I hope that some of the tips I've given in some of the other Business Bites videos have kind of led you a little bit more to understanding how you can be profitable and even self, just self-sufficient in your hobby or in your business. But what I want to get at today is a little bit deeper than that. A lot of people in those groups will tend to jump on somebody when they say they, you know, they want to be able to make money. And one of the biggest things that always gets on my go, it's always gets my back up, is when someone says, don't bother trying to make money woodworking because you'll never get your money back. You'll never get your money for the time. Now to that I call bullshit. That is the biggest load of bullshit I have ever heard. One, I'm evident right here that you can be self-sufficient, you can get your money back, and if you really want to put the effort in, you can actually be profitable. Now, am I yet living the dream of being a permanent maker, running a full-time furniture making business? No, I'm not. And I'll be the first to put my hand up and say I'm not there yet. Am I going to get there? 100%. I am 100% going to be there. And if I'm lucky, if I get everything working well for me, It'll be the end of this year, I'll be stepping away from my full-time job and looking at trying to push more permanent into furniture making and into this business. And this business will replace my full-time income. Now that's a fucking scary thing, let me tell you that. Because that takes away all the safety, all the security that I have in a full-time job in a successful company that is doing massive things in the world of IT and, and cloud computing. And anyone in the IT industry knows, you know, cloud computing is a big buzzword, and especially with sovereign cloud. Um, but for me, I can do it. I kind of enjoy it. But I love it. What I love is right here in my workshop. What I want to be doing permanently is right here in my workshop. And you know what? It's not just me. You can do it too. You can be permanent in your workshop. You can be self-sufficient in your workshop. You can be profitable in your workshop. It's not going to be something that will happen all the time. As I've covered in other videos, you need to walk away from stuff that's not going to pay you properly. If someone says, I'm going to give you 10 bucks for that thing that's taken you $15 to make, that's a waste of your time. Don't do it. Don't even consider it. Don't entertain it. If you can't even get your material cost back in what you're selling, then you're not selling it for enough. I had a discussion a few weeks back with a market store holder that I was set up next to talking about, uh, he was doing resin art, you know, the pour on beach scene, that sort of stuff. Um, he was selling about a fairly, fairly decent price. Um, like I think they were looking at 30, 40 bucks for a, a round tray that was big. Um, now he was getting prefabricated trays, so you know his his outlay probably wasn't much in that space. But his time and stuff in the resin and the effort to do it was probably well above the forty dollar price point that he had on them. And he made the comment to me that you know oh, you never get your money back for the time. Bullshit, bullshit. You never get your money back for the time. If you want to get your money back for the time, you'll get your money back for the time. You just need to be confident in what you've got confident in what you're selling and not willing to undersell yourself. If you're happy to sell your stuff for 40 bucks and not get your money back, so be it. You can sell yourself for 40 bucks and not get your money back. For me, that's not good enough. For me, I actually want to be able to, one, maintain the workshop that I've got, maintain the time that I've got in the workshop, and then secondly, I want to be able to move beyond that. My smalls, my small products that I make for market stalls, they're a cost recovery product. You know, do I make a lot of money on them? No. Do I cover the costs? Do I put a profit on top? 100% I do. 100% profit? No. My profit margin's probably closer to 20%-ish. 
and that's a standard profit margin I put across everything. I build a table, I build a desk, I work out my costs, my time to make it, and I put 20% on top as my profit margin. And that is about building my business profit and building my business. Again, if you want to live what you love doing, you need to act like you love doing it. If you're underselling yourself, if you're selling your your $40 product for $30, that's not showing the world that you're gonna love, that you love what you're doing. That's showing the world that you just wanna make something and, sell, and flog it off um, and hopefully maybe one day possibly think about considering getting your money back. If you really wanna enjoy what you're doing and really wanna actually start to pull some money into your business and become sufficient, um, whether it's a hobby business, whether it's a side hustle, whether it's something you want to convert to full time. You need to actually start pricing yourself properly. Price yourself properly, market yourself properly, stick to your guns for what you know you're worth. Live what you love doing and love what you live doing. You know, my dad had a saying that he used to throw at me every now and then, said, if you really love what you're doing, you'll never work a day in your life. Now, that's a little bit of a throwaway comment and a little bit kind of bullshit because even something you love doing, you know, working in a workshop, I love working in my workshop, but it's hard work. But you know what? It's a very different mindset. I can spend a day in my workshop and I look physically tired, but mentally I'm switched on, I'm 100%. I can spend a day in the office and I'm physically tired, I'm mentally tired, I'm just completely wiped by the time I get home. And it comes down to what you're loving doing and how you're approaching what you're loving doing. Live what you love, love what you live. Till next time, keep making.